Alrighty guys, so currently on the way to Sparky's house. I'm gonna make this into more of like a, kind of like a vlog thing, like where we might be working on multiple things, not just one specific thing, and then we'll kind of compilate it into a video. But uh, yeah, I'm driving my shit box currently. Um, my uh, 95 Celica, which is my daily. But it's getting so damn dark out so early, which sucks. It's You can see it's 6.02 here. And I just got off work. Sparky's just getting home from work. So I know I got a new sled to show you guys. Um, older, beat-up sled that runs really good, though. And then I got the Formula 500, the $40 sled. I got the carbs off that. We can start putting fuel lines on that, getting the gas out of the tank. Uh, we also have a winch to put on a big bear, so we got to do that yet. Um, put the winch on, so that might be an interesting task. And then what else? I got another Polaris Sportsman, maybe that has a fuel problem. Um, so I got got that. We got the parts for the '96 Jag Deluxe. We got that. We got the uh, drive shaft or a jack shaft bearing seal for the chain case. Um, some washers and such like that. And I got the buttons for the secondary clutch as well. So, yeah, uh, lots of stuff to do, like crazy amount of stuff. And then I got a, we bought another uh, slug too, another phaser on uh, first year, 1984 Yamaha phaser. And that one just needs some fuel system work. It ran on some gas down the spark plug holes. So we got to do the fuel system on that, possibly rebuild the carburetor. I don't know how much varnish gas is inside, so yeah, we'll start the camera back up when I uh, get here and we will start doing something. 500 um, ETP, which is the all-terrain pickup, basically it's like a sportsman with a dump box on the back. Um, it's an 04. Customer wanted just, uh, just a tune-up and he wanted to do just the idle speed a little bit higher. He said it kind of stalls out when it's real cold in the winter, so we're going to do that. Um, I just want to show you guys where this stuff is at. If you guys are ever doing a tune-up on one of these, pretty sure this is the exact same or very similar to a Sportsman 500, um, the 330 Sportsman, the 330 ATP. So basically, um, we did an air filter. There's the old air filter. The air filter is underneath this box. There's a like a hose clamp with a flathead. Um, you just take that out. It's got like a pre-filter and an actual air filter. Replace that. Spark plug guys, you're gonna have to take this side panel off. It's actually not not that bad. You gotta kind of be aggressive with the plastic tabs. Um, you might think you might like break them, but really they'll give enough. You just gotta kind of work them out and then put your fingers up in behind here and kind of squeeze the little tabs so it pops out. And then for the spark plug, I took the boot off, it's right here. Uh, the spark plug hole, let's see if I can get you guys is right down in there so you're going to need like a combination of some extensions and uh, a long ratchet I think Polaris actually has the tool that they supposed to supply you if you bought one of these new to get the spark plugs out so yeah that's how you get that off and then we're going to do an oil change with the filter and that's going to be on this side of the machine there's the oil filter uh, the manual actually you have to drain the oil in like two or three different places you got the filter you have the uh, oil reservoir tank drain, which is right there. And then you have, I think the crankcase itself of the engine has a drain as well. So I have the manual printed for that um, over here, spec sheet in the manual. So that's what we'll be doing on this. The Polaris, once again, uh, just changed the spark plug out, guys. Here is the old plug. I don't know how well you guys can see that. It was an NGK BKR 5E, which is the exact same plug I put in it. That's what my manual spec sheet says as well. 28 thousandths on the gap. That's what I said of that. Kind of a difficult one, guys, to, uh, to get at. It's down in there. What I did is I used an extension, a 3-inch with a 5 ace plug socket with the rubber in it. My torque wrench was set at 14 foot-pounds. I use a standard 3 8 ratchet just to break it loose and then I, you can't put the ratchet and the extension in at the same time, you got to put your extension and socket in first then attach the ratchet. 
So that's how you get the spark plug in and out. Torque it to 14 foot pounds. So we got going on. We got uh, one carburetor and two carburetors from the formula. I just found I'm going to put uni pod filters on each with an angled um, manifold. And I'll show you what we got going on over here. Because the airbox was full of water. And with the skidoo, it's got a nice chain or jack shaft cover. And the way the air filters will work, I can angle them up and they'll be out of the way. So that will be awesome. So much more room in there. But right now I'm going to get the fuel lines off and uh, hopefully start putting new ones on. And also putting, I'm not sure if I'm going to do the primer line because it is still pliable and doesn't have any like stress cracks that I can see. So I may leave that. But if I have to take the T-fitting apart down there, way at the bottom, might as well just do the primer line while I'm at it. Um, but I, I bought new carb flanges for the rotary valve because the old ones, I'll show you guys, were extremely neck, really dry, crusty, had a bunch of stuff on them. So like 13 something a piece for those. And then the air filters were like 17 a piece. And I think that was about it that I needed to order. We got the jack shaft for the Jag. And then we're working on the Big Bear, like I said. Got some new plugs for this thing. I got BR90S solid cores. But right now I gotta get the fuel lines done. And then I'll be on the waiting game for parts, obviously. And then when I get the new carb flanges, we can uh, install the carbs. The carbs were actually dry. There wasn't any fuel in them that I could tell. Um, when I pulled them off, they were very empty. So I'm gonna inspect them, see if they need needle seats. And uh, maybe I'll test them out and see if, if they'll hold any pressure. If they do, we'll send them as is and just clean them. If not, we'll get rebuild kits and rebuild them. Just because if this sled turns out to be nice, you know, it'd be a great runner. So um, we're going to put some tape on the old seat, get that thing fixed up. Other than that, that's where we're at right now. Seat looks much better. Just did a quick and dirty to get rid of some of those holes. Um, not going to win a beauty contest, but that saves it from tearing more. Um, I got one primer line on the income or the outgoing with the two new ones to the carbs. I'm going to have to drain the fuel system next, and then I got to replace the main fuel line first, and then I'll finish up with doing the carb outlets. And then I, I'm going to put a new impulse line on because that thing is rock solid. So I'm going to put some rags in the uh, rotary valve area because I'm going to be done for the day. I'm um, going to loosen the dash up to get at the primer lines because they were kind of tucked up underneath there. So I just took three torque screws out of the dash, and then I'm going to have to do something about the handlebar pad because it kind of disintegrated when I touched it. I did shop vac the inside of the engine, or like the hood area, so I got a lot of the debris out of there. Um, same with the foot guard area. Looks much better. It actually came with a Bombardier or OEM belt, which is really expensive. So that is uh, very good for a $40 sled. I think Spark was over here drilling holes for this winch. I mean, you guys can see we had the front plastics off. He drilled some holes. So we're going to be doing that, uh, finishing, or I guess continuing tomorrow. And then the Jag, I'll give you guys a little look at this. It's all taken apart still. Um, we got a used jack shaft sitting there. I got new bearings in my car. Um, so yeah, that's going to be another project we'll probably get to next week when I have a full focus. I'm trying to get this one here as far as I can until I have to wait for parts. Once I get the new lines and the fuel tank drained, it's basically just a waiting game. Um, and I'll tr see if I can freshen up anything else on it. Just kind of check over all the hoses, make sure the uh, track tension's good, stuff like that. And then we'll be able to dry fire it and see how it goes. But I want to dive into the carbs yet just before I conclude this video and then we should be good. So we'll take a look inside those carbs and hopefully they're not horrible and we can get away with just cleaning them. But if I have to buy a rebuild kit, not a big deal. We'll put new new jets and needle seats and float needle, all that stuff in there and we'll be good to go. Um, they actually look a lot better than I would have expected. I took all the internals already out of them. Um, there's just a lot of bad gas in them. All the bowl gaskets, floats are nice and free, so it shouldn't be too bad. Like I said, I got pod filters coming. Um, 63 millimeter or two and a half inch with the bend in it so it should clear the jack shaft perfectly and then I'll, I'll start boiling these maybe tomorrow 
and then we can clean them out and put them back together. It's more primer line, but yeah, that's where we're at. Should be, should be good to go, hopefully. And then we just gotta add some parts, and then uh, we'll see if it'll run. But yeah, a lot of projects in the meantime, and uh, we'll keep her sending. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Plenty of variety of stuff um, that we're doing lately. A crazy amount of stuff. The formula is pretty nice for 40 bucks. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. We'll see you in the next one.